We now come to the statement. I now call the Home Secretary. Thank you, Mr Speaker. With permission, <clears throat> I would like to make a statement about the UK's Migration and Economic Development Partnership with Rwanda. This Government fundamentally believes that it is only by removing the incentive for people to take dangerous and unnecessary journeys that we will stop the boats and end the vicious cycle of people smuggling into UK shores. That is why my right honourable friend, the member for Witham, signed our groundbreaking Migration and Economic Development Partnership with Rwanda in April of last year. That agreement allows individuals who arrive in the UK through dangerous, unnecessary and illegal routes to be relocated to Rwanda for the consideration of their asylum claims and to build a new life there. I visited Kigali in March, meeting with Rwanda's President and Foreign Minister and signing an update to our Memorandum of Understanding that would bring it in line with our Illegal Migration Bill. Rwanda has reiterated its commitment and capacity to receive thousands of individuals, process their claims and provide them with excellent care before they are transitioned to longer-term accommodation with all the necessary support and services. And it is why, under the terms of that agreement, we attempted our first relocation flight to Rwanda to demonstrate that if you come here illegally, you will be removed to a safe third country for your claim to be processed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Importantly, Rwanda is a country where the UNHCR itself yeah. operates an emergency yeah. transit scheme yeah. for migrants from Libya yeah. and with which we have a robust agreement to protect asylum seekers from risk of harm. That first relocation flight was unfortunately frustrated by last-minute measures from the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, which has had the effect of pausing flights while our domestic legal proceedings are ongoing. In December, the Divisional Court of the High Court comprehensively upheld the lawfulness of the partnership, confirming that Rwanda was a safe country. That judgment was appealed to the Court of Appeal, which heard the appeal in April of this year and handed down its judgment earlier today. Mr Speaker, I respect the Court and welcome the fact that it unanimously found in the Government's favour on the vast majority of the appeals brought against the policy. Unanimously, the Court of Appeal confirmed that removing asylum seekers to a safe country is entirely consistent with the Refugee Convention, including Article 31. Indeed, the Court of Appeal found that it is lawful, in principle, for the Government to relocate people who come to the UK illegally to a safe third country, that the Government can designate countries as safe, and that our processes for determining eligibility for relocation were fair. Unfortunately, two of the judges were of the view that there were deficiencies in the Rwandan asylum system that risked there being a breach of Article 3 of the ECHR. Importantly, their concerns were not that conditions in Rwanda would be unsafe, but that there was a possibility that they could be returned to other countries from Rwanda where they may suffer ill treatment. It is therefore simply incorrect to say that the Court of Appeal has found that conditions in Rwanda make it unsafe for individuals yes. Yes. there. The Court of Appeal has ruled, instead, that there is a risk of refoulement to other countries from Rwanda. The Lord Chief Justice <coughs> took a different view. Agreeing with the High Court, he held that there was no real risk of individuals being sent to unsafe countries. He cited the strong assurance given by the Rwandan government, the fact that Rwanda does not have returns agreements with those countries, and the powerful protections provided by monitoring arrangements that would be in place. The result is that the High Court's decision that Rwanda was a safe third country for the purposes of asylum re relocation is reversed. 
We have a strong relationship with Rwanda, Mr. Speaker, and both sides remain committed to the policy. Rwanda is a signatory to the United Nations Conventions and has a strong track record of supporting refugees, including for the UNHCR. This is a disappointing judgment, and we will seek permission to appeal it. We hope that the process will be swift, and I am glad that the Court of Appeal has recognised in paragraph 16 of its summary judgment that this is an important consideration that should be timely dealt, dealt with in a timely fashion. This judgment is disappointing for the majority of the British people, who have repeatedly voted for controlled migration, and for all those who want to see us deliver on our moral and democratic imperative to stop the boats. Now, Mr Speaker, I'm sure that all members of this House would agree that the British people are compassionate, reasonable and fair-minded. Since 2015, we have welcomed half a million people in need from all over the world via our global safe and legal routes, as well as via our country-specific routes encompassing Ukraine, Hong Kong, Afghanistan and Syria. But they are not naive, Mr Speaker. While our compassion to help people may be infinite, the public understand that our capacity to do so is finite and therefore precious. The British people will no longer indulge the polite fiction that we have a duty or infinite capacity to support everyone in the world who is fleeing persecution, nor anyone that would simply like to come here to improve their lot and succeeds in making it to our shores. That abuse is unfair on local communities forced to absorb thousands of illegal arrivals and the pressure on public services and social cohesion that this entails. It is unfair on taxpayers who foot the hotel bill currently running to £6 million a day that could rise to £32 million a day by 2026 for people who have broken into this country. It is unfair on those who play by the rules and who want to see an asylum system that is fit for purpose, that our current system is exploited and turned against us by those with no right to be in the UK. It is unfair on those most in need of protection, in particular women, children and those without the money to pay the people smugglers, that our asylum system is overwhelmed by fit young men who have paid criminals thousands of pounds to smuggle them into the UK. And it's unfair, Mr Speaker, on people and our partners in the developing world that we in the West continue to maintain an asylum seeker system so open to abuse that it incentivises mass flows of economic migration into Europe, lining the pockets of people smugglers and turning our seas into graveyards, all in the name of a phony humanitarianism. Mm. This is madness, Mr Speaker, and it must end. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that is why we, on this side of the House, are committed to doing whatever it takes to stop the boats. Yeah, yeah. The Government remains resolute that we will do exactly that in partnership with Rwanda and through changes to our law. That is the only way we will break the business model of the people smugglers. That is the only way we will save lives. That is the only way we will stop the boats. Mr Speaker, I commend this statement to the House. Yeah. Yeah. Shadow Home Secretary Abek Cooper. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Today's judgment shows that the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary have no plan to fix the Tories' small boats chaos. Exactly. And their only policy only. to send everyone to Rwanda is now completely unravelling. Ministers have already admitted it will cost £169,000 to send each person to Rwanda, on top of the £140 million cheques they have already written, with more costs to come. But now the court has found that ministers did not even do the basic work to make sure that the Rwanda scheme was legal or safe.
Over four years, this Tory boats crisis has grown and grown, and they have completely broken the asylum system. They have failed to stop criminal gangs taking hold along our borders, gangs that have seen their profits soar from three million four years ago to more than 180 million today. They promised four years ago they would end boat crossings in six months. They have gone up more than 20-fold since then. Convictions for people smuggling have actually dropped. Asylum decision-making collapsed down by a third, yet the costs of the asylum system have have soared. A five-fold increase in the cost for just one person in the asylum system, that's no one else's fault, just Tory mismanagement and yep. chaos. That's and a soaring backlog as a result up to a record high of 175,000. And the Home Office themselves projecting that those Tory failures will rise to a cost of £11 billion, the cost of their failure. Yep. And instead of getting a grip of any of that, all they can come up with is gimmicks to make things worse. This Rwanda scheme is unworkable, unethical, extortionately expensive and a costly and damaging distraction from the urgent practical action we should be taking, from the plan Labour has set out to stop wasting all this money on a failing scheme to go after the crimin and, uh, to, uh, on Rwanda, instead to go after the criminal gangs and to get a stronger agreement with France and sort out this massive backlog that is costing a fortune. Action to stop the danger dangerous boat crossings that are undermining our border security and putting lives at risk. But the Home Secretary has defended her Rwanda plan, but here's what the judgment reveals. Not only will it cost £169,000 for each person and 140 million cheques they've sent, there will, according to the Lord Chief Justice, be substantial sums of future aid support. How much? They are expecting Rwanda to take asylum decisions under a memorandum of understanding, but the judgment reveals the Rwandan asylum system only takes around 100 decisions a year at the moment, has had a 100 per cent rejection rate for Afghanistan, Syria and Yemen, and under the Israel-Rwanda deal, the government breached the memorandum of understanding. People were routinely targeted by agents and gangs and moved clandestinely to, tr to Uganda, making trafficking worse. The judgment also says Rwanda only has one committee that takes all the asylum decisions and only one eligibility officer preparing cases. So the idea that the government is going to be able to de deliver on its pledges, even the Lord Chief Justice, who finds the scheme could be lawful, has said it only is on the basis that the scheme is small, just 100 people. The Home Secretary talks today again about thousands of people being sent. The Lord Chief Justice says the talk of Rwanda within a few years being a destination for thousands of asylum seekers is political hyperbole. 100 people is less than 0.5% of those who arrived in the UK. So no wonder the Home Office admits there's no evidence it will act as a deterrent. It is a total con on the British people. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So there are two questions for the Home Secretary. Does she agree with the Lord Chief Justice that thousands is political hyper hyperbole and that even if she succeeds, it will just be a few hundred instead? And how long is she going to keep wasting all of this taxpayers' money yeah, on a failing policy and wasting everybody's time on this ramping up the rhetoric rather than coming up with a serious plan. Today, this afternoon, the Borders Inspectorate set out a damning indictment of the Tory Home Office and its ability to pursue casework or have accurate data. It says in the Home Office there is no single version of the truth and concludes this is no way to run a government department. But she is running it. This Home Secretary is running this chaos, failing to sort out the boat's chaos, failing to clear the backlog or mend the broken asylum system, failing to get a grip. I don't doubt she'll now stand up and read from her pre-prepared script and blaming everyone else and making up stuff all about the Labour Party rather than answering the two questions that she has been put, rather than answering anybody's questions about the decisions that she has made. She's in charge. The Tories have been in charge for 13 years. This is their chaos. Their Tory chaos their boat's chaos and their broken asylum system. We don't need more slogans. We need solutions, not more gimmicks. We need a government with a grip. She's clearly not capable of it. So why doesn't she move over and leave way to someone else? I thank the Honourable Lady for her.
pre-prepared script as well. <laughs> Very well delivered. I have to say, she seems unusually upbeat today, which I find, frankly, quite odd, given that today's judgment will be frustrating for the majority of the British yes. people who have repeatedly yes. voted yes. Yes. for controlled migration, for all those yes. who want to see this yes. government deliver on our promise to stop the boats. I can't help but contrast that public sentiment of disappointment with her excitement and delight today. As so many of her colleagues on the opposition benches are cheering this decision, we see an opposite view here. Today is a bad day for the British people. Today is a good day for the people smugglers. It is a good day for Labour. As ever, from the shadow Home Secretary, there is no regard for the will of the British people. I know she sees the will of the British people as an inconvenience and an irritation, because her statement demonstrates that she simply has no empathy for the impact of illegal migration on local communities. She fails and refuses to recognise that those crossing by small boat, Mr Speaker, are doing so illegally. And as ever from Labour, there is no alternative plan. And moreover, they don't care that they have no alternative plan. Because, Mr. Speaker, the truth is that our current system is rigged against the British people. That is why we are changing the law. The Labour Party is perfectly content with this rigged system. They'd like to keep it in place. That's why they're opposing our illegal migration yeah. bill. That's why they would scrap our partnership with Rwanda. And rather than propose any meaningful reforms to the asylum system, Labour would keep the system as it is to enable more people to come to the country illegally so they can be settled into local communities more quickly. That is simply open borders masquerading as humanitarianism, and she should be honest with the British people. I also wonder if the White Honourable Lady has actually read the judgment, given her gleeful disposition. So let me repeat some of it to her. While the Court of Appeal did find, by majority, with a dissenting view from the Lord Chief Justice, that there were deficiencies in the Rwandan asylum system, specifically relating to the risk of reformment, all other grounds on which the appeal was brought were unanimously dismissed. That means that the policy does not breach our obligations under the UN Refugee Convention. It does not breach our domestic laws, as the Right Honourable Lady and the Opposition have consistently maintained it would. As I have said, we will appeal the disappointing aspects of the judgment, or we'll seek permission to appeal them. But I think the British people will see quite clearly, Mr Speaker, that while we are trying to stop the boats, Labour have simply obstructed progress time and time again and offered no solutions. The Prime Minister and I have promised to do whatever it takes to stop the boats. Labour have apparently pledged to do whatever it takes to stop us stopping the boats. Say, <laughs> Chip. Gently to the Home Secretary, this is about the statement of the judgment about migration. This isn't about the Labour Party. This is about what the government's doing. I don't want to interfere, I don't want to intervene, but we do need to stick to what the statement's meant to be about. Home Secretary. Thank you, Mr Speaker. So, in conclusion, in any event, while Labour continue to celebrate today's judgment and continue to celebrate every obstacle in our way, we will not be deterred, we will not give up, we will do whatever it takes for the British people to stop the boats. Yeah. Yeah.